Hello, I'm Professor Richard Toy and I'm here in Providence, Rhode Island at the North American Conference of British Studies with Professor James Berman from the University of California, Berkeley. And James gave an absolutely fascinating paper yesterday on fidelity capitalism in the airline industry. Uh, now James, what do you mean by this term fidelity capitalism? I use this term fidelity capitalism to talk about um, a sort of shift in, in global capitalism that I think happens in the begins in the late 1970s, but really intensifies in the 1990s. Um, and it's a way in which the airline industry developed the types of reward programs and loyalty schemes that are now ubiquitous in our lives. I mean, my own wallet right now has about five different loyalty cards from where I buy my coffee to where I buy my groceries mm. to um, to where I buy everything with my with my credit card. So I was interested in trying to understand how my wallet got full of all of these cards <laughs> um, and when that process began. And I think um, it begins actually simultaneously in the credit card industry and, and the airline industry. And those two stories are connected, but yesterday I was really trying to focus on the airline industry. And where do you think the origins of this are? Because you, you mentioned very briefly in your paper sort of green shield stamps. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could even look at you know, cooperatives as something, mm -hmm. which those things which reward customers. So where, where do you think these ideas come from? Um, I think that green shield stamps, which operate both in the UK and in the US, um, and in the US they started in the 1930s, and in, in the UK they start in the 1950s, around the same time that you get the development of um, membership um, credit cards like Diners Club um, and uh, American Express, and they both work differently. So they work as different forms of the reward programs and clubs that we will see coming out soon in, in what I consider the sort of main era of fidelity capitalism. So Green Shield Stamps works where you get given stamps for your purchase of other commodities. Um, and credit cards, the early credit cards were literally you paid a subscription fee to um, be able to get a Diners Club or an American Express and that would then give you access to particular types of, um, into particular types of worlds. Um, you know, you could pay for your, for your meal out in a restaurant with a Diners Club where you wouldn't be able to with a conventional um, uh, uh, um, credit card. And I mean, what you're really getting at when you're sort of talking about these sort of loyalty schemes and uh, attempts to, you're really talking about the kind of attempt to build a bond between the company and, and the consumer. Yes, and, I, and I, that's exactly what I'm trying to suggest. And that, I think, is quite different from those early forms of, 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 of loyalty programs. And so that attempt to get customers to identify with and connect with a particular brand and a particular company uh, it really begins to happen in um, in the 1970s and the 1990s, and and it happens in two different ways at that moment. So the first one is that the airline industry has a real crisis of profitability in the 1970s, which is a consequence of many things. But you could say the oil crisis was a key uh, was a key um, uh, factor there, and uh, they were not able to fill their planes with the economy class seats that had just come out with new types of jumbo jets. So they tried to focus on securing the loyalty of their high income passengers um, and trying to develop a business class service, which for British Airways was known as the executive club that began in 1978. And it was a, simply a section which we're now very familiar with between first class and, and economy class. And so the executive club eventually develops a way in a, a, a um, like the early credit cards, a way of trying to offer those customers particular services, additional services than they would have got um, in economy class. And it's not until the 1990s when the Gulf War um, and the um, uh, recession of the early 90s leads to another crisis of prof profitability in the airline industry that those executive club members begin to have um, what we would now know as frequent flyer programs. I guess the other th sort of final question, it struck me that you, you said yesterday that you very much weren't going to use the terminology of neoliberalism mm -hmm. in relation to this. I just wondered if you could say why not. Is it simply because you 
don't see neoliberalism in general as a very helpful tool, or that this is, is in some way not an example of neoliberalism? Well, I think what, what I was trying to um, talk about was a, this, a sort of um, a global shift in, in um, a, a shift in global capitalism, I guess, that I would say, and I think that there, um, a neoliberalism is too broad a brush. What I'm interested in trying to identify, and we haven't talked about this, is the relationship between customers' loyalties to the brand and their understanding that they would put the brand above price um, and that, that the immaterial rewards of belonging to the club were greater than the price points. So it seems to run against the idea that deregulation is being driven by um, uh, uh, by trying to lower prices for the, for the consumer. Um, but the other key element of this is the effect that it has on workers. And so much of what I talked about yesterday is the way that the airline industries try and at the very time that they're um, laying off their cabin crews and intensifying the, um, uh, uh, the shift patterns of those cabin crews, they're also trying to get the cabin crew to represent the brand and the, the cabin crew become a vital part of trying to convince consumers to remain loyal to the program so that the, the burden rests with the workers um, in a way that we haven't seen before and obviously that's part of a, of a set of patterns that we can see in other areas in terms of the way in which people talk about this neoliberalism but I think it's too imprecise a term at the moment to be useful to make sense of this particular form of capitalism that I'm interested in in, in, in recovering. Well I shall reflect on all that on my flight back to Heathrow tomorrow. I hope you have an air mile Steve. I don't. <laughs> James Vernon, thank you very much. Thank you.